Do you ever wonder how your data analytics skills actually stack up? Like how do you compare against thousands of other analysts out there that are trying to enter this field? Well, I've been in the field of data analytics for more than seven years now. I started as a junior data analyst, I became a senior data analyst, I'm now a data analytics lead, and I have actually seen myself the differences of the people in these different stages. And so the goal for me in this video is to go through the details of each stage of the analyst journey so that you can see exactly where you rank. And I will also show you the exact strategies and focus areas that help me to go from stage one to the last one. So depending on the stage that you are at right now, you also have a very, very clear roadmap and plan on how to progress on the next one. If we have never met before, I'm Lorenzo. I'm a data analytics lead currently based in London, and I've been working for companies like Deloitte and AWS. And I'm also the founder of the Analytics and Automation Academy. And the goal of my academy is exactly to bring you on the last stage of the analyst journey. And so not really stopping at a very beginner level, but bring you to the top 1% of analysts out there. So in case you're interested, make sure to check the link in video description. And now let's see the four stages of the analytics journey and see where you rank exactly. So the number one stage is what I call the tool collector phase. If you have completed your first SQL query, if you have completed your first Tableau dashboard, so Power BI dashboard, or maybe you finished the data cleaning project, well, you are ahead of all those people that want to learn data analytics, but didn't actually do anything practical about it. It means also that you have moved beyond only watching tutorials and actually applied something practical hands-on. Now, the thing is that there is no doubt that this phase is also the most frustrating one. You are constantly fighting and debugging on uh, syntax errors. You don't know what tool to learn next, and you're putting way too many hours compared to the results that you see. Now, the good news for you is that you will immediately see that the second and third and fourth project that you complete pretty much will follow a same pattern. You will start seeing that, for example, building your second or third uh, dashboard will follow a lot of the steps that you followed in your first uh, dashboard as well. So obviously there will be some new elements and some new complexities, but at least you're not going to see everything new from scratch for the first time. At this stage, my core belief is that you want to optimize for volume and also for experimentation. And these two combined together will lead to a breakthrough moment where something will click. Maybe creating a dashboard in Tableau will take you half an hour instead of four. And that is exactly when you get ready to move to stage two. And probably the only thing that stops you to actually enter stage in two is what I call tool paralysis. Now that you're getting a bit more familiar with the tool you're using, you start seeing tutorials online and you end up discovering that there is uh, data engineering tools, that there are data science tools, that there are more sophisticated libraries in Python that you can use apart from Pandas and NumPy. And to me, the best way to beat tool paralysis is to choose, for example, one language, either SQL or Python, only one data visualization tool, either Tableau or Power BI, and just stick to those. Just master these initial skills that you chose and then get ready to move to other ones. You don't want to collect courses, you want to start building reps. Once you hit stage two, you're already ahead of the majority of data analysts out there. And I call this stage the pattern recognition phase. And this is where you stop Googling every single function and start recognizing uh, data structures, common problems, and reusable solutions. You can clean a data set without a tutorial. You can join tables together without checking the syntax. You understand what a distribution is and why it matters. And so here, it's uh, less about learning new tools and more about understanding what a good analysis actually means. And now that you have this kind of understanding and also understand different patterns in your data analysis tasks, this is also where you increase dramatically your efficiency. Maybe when you build a dashboard, you already understood that you can use a template, maybe that you found online or maybe that the organization saved in a repository and use that template as a starting point so that all the formatting is done and you just have to plug in the data. Or maybe you you build a list of SQL queries that you know you can all the time use for data cleaning or potentially for a specific statistical analysis that you're performing. And to me, your focus in this phase should be on exactly increase your productivity and efficiency as much as possible. As I mentioned, as soon as you recognize some patterns, you want to find ways to automate those tasks for all those instances that you think are repeatable. To put this into practice, this is, for example, when you understand that on a weekly basis, 
maybe the finance team will send you a excel file and that you have to combine that excel file with your existing data so that you can have updated information and because you understand that there is a repetitive task then you put up a process in place so that this task is completely automated you receive the excel and then you have a sort of a pipeline that brings the data into the dashboard or the data solution that you built all automatically with some checks in place obviously but my main point here is that you're going to treat this task as not something that you start completely from scratch but something that you've done before you recognize the pattern and so now you're able to automate obviously to do that and also what will bring you to the next phase is also a high adoption of ai tools which can be a simple large language models that you use as a, an assistant to again uh, increase efficiency or potentially a code editor that allows you to code maybe two or three x faster now as you move to stage three you are now becoming a bit more senior in the data analytics landscape and you will distinguish yourself from the majority of people that are junior or entry-level data analyst now i call this stage the domain expert phase and this is the true inflection point in your career at this stage you're not just focused on the technical aspects of the data analytics process but you're actually starting to talk very closely with business people this is where you don't need uh, for example the marketing stakeholder to come to you with exactly the list of requirements that they need but actually you starting working with your stakeholder to uh, define those requirements because you also are gaining some knowledge on that domain specifically and so that means that you are able to sit in meetings with uh, different people from different teams and not only share your expertise from a technical level but actually understand your customer way better and so also influence business decisions and also this is a stage where you're building credibility and a strong reputation within the company and so that also means that if a person before was coming to you with some tasks and instructions to follow now you can start being that person actually creating those instructions for yourself and for other teams as well and so my core belief and focus at this stage is that actually you have to spend a bit less time on the technical side of your work and actually way more time with people so that means you know scheduling catch-ups with for example again people in marketing or people in finance or people in sales to really understand what they are doing in their teams to also update them on uh, the data situation that you are dealing with so that you're not only in a backstage working on technicalities but you are part of the room and part of those important conversations that the whole company is having and obviously as uh, you spend way more time with these people immediately we will also gain way more domain knowledge in a specific area that you choose in organization maybe you start the first project in the company with the finance team and maybe you like this area and so over time and over the years you're going to become the financial person expert from a technical level on the data side but also expert on uh, you know the financial domain and all the financial metrics that the company cares about once you break through stage three you enter stage four this is what i call the strategic architect stage and if you want to see these people on uh, linkedin these are probably the people with roles such as data analytics lead analytics managers or supervisors at this stage you're not just answering a simple set of questions but you're actually setting up the systems the uh, frameworks and the processes that enable data-driven decisions at scale you're building a data model end-to-end -end from the collection of the data data cleaning uh, exploration of the data data visualization recommendation based on insights and also the whole maintenance of this uh, whole pipeline plus you start mentoring junior analysts and maybe you start managing a small team and the problems that you're trying to solve here is less about what the data say and more about how do we build a culture for the whole company where data actually drives decisions my core belief at this stage and what i would focus on are two important skills which are delegation and prioritization you simply cannot do everything by yourself and so first of all you have to understand what is really important over all the tasks that are coming your way and creating a clear prioritization plan to organize your work and then you have to understand delegation so you have to start delegating some of potentially uh, lower impact tasks to junior resources and make sure that even when you delegate you're still making good progress on the project as a team it's no more about yourself only it's also about yourself empowering others to do the same stuff that you are able to do now there is one secret level that everyone can access no matter at which stage they are in their journey and that is the stage where you recognize that you are enough exactly where you are because the final boss is not imposter syndrome or lack of skills it's you the voice that says 
says you are not ready, not technical enough, not experienced enough, and you don't want to beat that voice. You want to learn to work with it. You want to accept that doubt is part of your growth and you act anyway. As long as you stay focused on creating value for others, you are exactly at the stage you need to be at. And there you have it, a simple video showing you all the four stages of the analyst journey. And now I will be super, super curious to see in the comments where you think you rank within these four stages and actually what is your focus area right now to get into the next stage. As I mentioned in this video, if you want me to help you landing your first uh, data analytics uh, job, then make sure to check the Analytics and Automation Academy. You can check the uh, link in video description and apply on the website. And that will allow me to teach you all the main skills that you need in data analytics, such as Excel, SQL, Tableau, and Python learning AI agents and domain knowledge, and more importantly, support you all the way until you land a job in data analytics. So if you're interested, make sure to check the video description. I will also leave here in the screen some other practical videos that I made on SQL and Python in case you want to check out some practical hands-on projects. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day. Ciao for now and see you in the next one.